son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing it and upholding it with righteousness and justice from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Gillian. We're going to stand together and sing our first carol for today. Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Our Gospel reading today comes from Luke chapter 2. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. 
He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please do have a seat, everyone. I don't know about you, but one of the things that astounds me so much about Jesus coming to be with us is how often it could all have gone wrong. What if Mary said no? What if the shepherds decided that they were seeing things? What if the wise men simply decided to stay put? What if Mary hadn't carried Jesus to term? What if she'd given in to the shame that she was under? Jesus was born amongst animals and immediately pursued by a ruthless tyrant. And yet, still, he had life, even as he had lost everything as they softened their voice, stretched themselves beyond what they thought was possible to care for him, cooing, stroking his hair, playing peekaboo. Jesus has life. And because of that life, because Jesus was born, there is always hope. That is the gift that God gives us, along with all the other presents that we will have today. Perhaps we've struggled to find hope at various points this year. Maybe we can relate to Mary and Joseph having to change all of their plans because of government decrees. But that gift of hope that Jesus brings us at Christmas time assures us in the most gentle, unthreatening, passionate, and disarming way imaginable that God is there. God will always be there. In a world of cruel emperors and petty kings, Jesus, born as a baby, shows us what truly matters. Not wealth or status or power or control or any of the things that we're afraid of losing, but life, life with God. That is what truly matters, and it will never disappear. Even beyond death, there is always hope because God is there. God came to earth as a tiny baby because he loves the world beyond everything that we could imagine. And that means that today and every day, we can come to God just as we are. Jesus comes to us today, not as a decree, but as a person, not as a powerful leader, but as a child with arms held. I pray that God would meet you exactly however you're celebrating Christmas love. And by God's grace, may St. James, may Bulkington be a place, may we be people who hold out that hope and that love to the world around us. Happy Christmas, everyone. Amen. Can I invite you to join me in standing as we declare our faith in the words of the Creed on page 7 of our service sheets. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. If you'd like to take your seats, David is going to come and lead us in our prayers for today. Thank you, David.
at the end of each prayer, I will say, loving God, we look to you. Please respond with, receive our prayer. God, born as a baby, we pray for children who cry and who are not comforted, for all families of every size and description, but especially those whose family life is broken in some way, through abuse, bereavement, estrangement, debt, depression or distance. We pray for parents who fear for their children's future and for the lonely who are scared to let people into their lives. Infant Jesus, help us to have compassion on each other, to overcome our own fears and to find ways to shine your love into the lives of those we meet each day. Loving God, we look to you. Receive our prayer. God, for whom there was no room at the inn and who was cradled in a manger, we give thanks for those places we regard as safe, warm and welcoming, acknowledging the blessing of the security we experience. We pray for those denied shelter or asylum, those who are trafficked for profit, and those for whom a safe haven suddenly becomes dangerous. Jesus, through whom God risks all to reach, reach us, help us who have a voice to speak wisely, to encourage justice and offer hope and hospitality. Loving God, we look to you. Receive our prayer. God, whose coming was announced with words of peace and joy, we pray for a world where conflict dominates news headlines, where the indecisions of a few leads to hardship for many, and where the gulf between wealth and poverty widens. Jesus, in the humility of your birth, help us to recognize where we risk adding to the world's strife and inspire us to seek ways of bringing people together for the benefit of this community and to the glory of your name. Loving God, we look to you. Receive our prayer. God, who came to bring salvation to the world, we pray for those who do not recognize or know you, whose hearts have become hardened to your message through a loss of trust and the pain of past hurts. Jesus, who brought forgiveness of sin and the hope of resurrection, help us to acknowledge our mistakes, to make room in our hearts for the apologies that others offer and to receive the gift of your Son as a living witness to the new life that you bring. Loving God, we look to you. Receive our prayer. Jesus, our Emmanuel, we give thanks that you came not only in the form of human baby, but continue to dwell with us through the power of your Holy Spirit. We hold in prayer before you those in particular need of the knowledge of your presence with them that through your spirit they might know your strength, your healing, your peace, and your amazing love for them. We remember especially today Paul Towers, Margaret Wikes, Anne McCreeth, Josie Bayliss, June Quinney, Maggie Harris, Sheila Pike, Helena, Stephen, Evelyn, Rachel Broomfield, Charles, Chris Worley, Aidan Coleman and Lizzie Steele. Jesus, just as you come to us daily, may we consciously make time to come to you, not just this Christmas day, but every day of our lives. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, David. Shall we stand together to share the peace? Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. From where we are, either here in the building or online, let's offer one another a sign of that peace. Peace be with you, everyone.
and two, join together in our next carol, Once in Royal David City. here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And now we give you thanks, Father, because in coming among us, Jesus revealed the radiance of your glory and brought us out of darkness into your own marvelous light. And so we join the angels to celebrate as we say together, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father, on the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. He took bread and thanked you. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the new promise of God's unfailing love. Do this in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, as we bring this bread and wine and remember his death and resurrection, send your Holy Spirit that we who share these gifts may be fed by Christ's body and his blood. Pour your Spirit on us that we may love one another Work for the healing of the earth and share the good news of Jesus 
as we wait for his coming in glory. For honor and praise belong to you, Father, with Jesus, your Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let's sit together as we continue in prayer. And as our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Well, as we gather around the Lord's table on this Christmas day, you are very welcome to come forward and to receive the bread as we share together, or if you would prefer to receive a prayer of blessing, then just keep your hands by your sides uh, as you come forward today. And as we uh, move around the building, uh, Sue will guide us forward, uh, starting from the back of church and working our way to the front. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father.
Let's join together in the prayer after communion at the bottom of page 11. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all peoples. Amen. Well, I want to uh, take this opportunity to say thank you so much, everybody, for being here today, both those gathered in the building and those worshipping online. It's been wonderful to uh, celebrate Christmas with you, and I hope that you have a very joyful and blessed Christmas, whatever you're doing today. Uh, and as we go on into the Christmas season, remember that the celebrations last a long time. So uh, really go for it and wear those Christmas jumpers out. As we go from here, let's pray for God's blessing. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Mary and Joseph, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.